Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we're going through my round 9 AFLW Fancy Team Reveal and it's sort of just gotten to the point where I'm just like, you know what, let's just screw it. I mean I had a Twitter conversation with someone on the, um, on yesterday, on Thursday about this and basically just came to the conclusion of just, you know what, having some fun. I think it was Ben who um, said it and basically just why not go for it. I mean the the numbers sort of stay relatively even unless Ham does drop a like 30 but I don't think she has really dropped a 30 when she's been injury free. Her lowest injury free score is a is a 48 which is am I going to gain 50 points out of going um, Frederick over someone like a Roe or a Kelly? you're probably going to get close. And then also, am I going to gain sort of that 50 points from going sort of um, Stannett over like a Walker or a Darcy, which was the sort of other way around. And I think you're sort of getting on that verge of getting 50 points, um, getting that 50 points or so back that I would be losing from Ham to um, to Swanson most likely. And, um, and then also there is a potential for Ham to go crazy and get that midfield roll back that she probably does deserve to have some time in the midfield. Um, we'll see what the Swans do, but I think she does deserve to get that midfield roll back. And hopefully she can actually return back to and get that another 85, 90 or so score, um, which she was doing semi-regularly in Season 7. But anyway, before we get into the video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the video. So as you can see here, this is the side for round um, nine. And if I just quickly update this, so I actually get the, um, there we go. Um, you can see all the metrics there. And it says, um, actually, that's just for some reason not done the trades right. So we will now actually do the trades for you and you'll see which trades I do. Um, and actually now thinking about it, um, the trade that I was thinking about anyway was including Swanson in and etc etc and that would have caused a lot more chaos actually. Um, if you if if you run along with me with doing this, uh, you'll see Swanson gets us down to one point five seven six, and really that's only. Um, I think if we even do this with a Walker, say Walker, um, you'll see eight fifty nine. You can't get literally anyone in the forward line for eight fifty nine k. So that really did, you'll see that I'd have to go with like Skepper maybe and Skepper's losing potentially 40, 50, 60 points to uh, Frederick anyway and also Walker's potentially losing 20 or 30 points to Stannett. So, and Stannett's got that amazing role. So um, let's just get rid of you, get rid of you and uh, let's put in Frederick because I think Frederick, just look at her last three of uh, 76, 95, 94. You can just see her really starting to dominate and she's got Sydney where she's going to get 40 or 50 hit outs to be honest with you against the Swans with Bella Smith and I don't even know who's uh, rucking for the Swans this week um, let's just look at that you got both the rucks there injured forward line obviously uh, let's get rid of that um, I don't really see a forward line uh, ruck in there you've got Hamilton who's probably going to make the team now that it's an actual Sunday game and they haven't announced the full team yet, I don't believe. So I think Hamilton will make it um, on the bench for the Swans, if I just go to their, their bench. Their bench involves... So it's currently... Smith is currently the Ruckman. If you go here and you'll see um, here, you'll see Bella Smith. She got 15 hitouts last week against, um, against Western Bulldogs, and that included Borg, who was on debut. And if we go to that game there, you'll see that Borg actually dominated the hitouts. Um, 29, uh, 29 to 15. Hamilton against Pritchard was 9 to 8. And they had Pritchard, who I think is actually a midfielder, going in the ruck as well. So that was just... Even Cynthia Hamilton went in the ruck for a little bit. So it was just a shocking... The Swans ruck department is absolutely gone. So I expect... Um, I expect the likes of um, Frederick to go absolutely nuts, and that's why I'm picking her. And then Stannett has that midfield role. I mean, we went for... We looked at the DFS. Um, I did this on Thursday night as well, just when I was um, having that conversation just to see. And we saw... I saw this um, role for Stannett solidified, definitely. Absolutely solidified here. You can see 
0008207080385 and then we go to standard tier um, I'm going to have to actually switch this across let me just go all clubs to make it easier in the end you'll see standard um, she did have 54 against Melbourne but that was just a shocking first quarter I believe that caused that um, was it the Richmond game that she started getting going uh, Richmond she started getting going and you can just see I mean she's been consistent all year but I think Especially Melbourne, it'll be a, it'll definitely be a tougher game, but I think she won't get tagged or anything, and I think it will just be she can easily lay ten to twelve tackles, and it'll just be about getting that. Um, I mean, she could easily get a fifteen disposal effort, especially with Bowers not being named in the midfield. If we actually look at the the midfield numbers, um, Bowers had sixty two percent. It doesn't seem like she's going to be named in the midfield this week. It seems like it's going to be. A Stanet, um, let me bring up their game, wherever it is. It is on the Mon it's on the Saturday, um, the early game on Saturday. If we look at the Frio, the Frio lineup at the moment, it is O'Sullivan, who, if we look here, had 0%. Um, so that's sort of surprising. I will, I will say that um, in that I do believe we will see Bowers and Sullivan, O'Sullivan just swap, just straight swap, simple as that. But we could see a potential that... Um, O'Sullivan does play in the midfield. Um, as she's played a 70, a 7, a 15, and a 20. So she's played a little bit there, but I don't expect her to play um, as much. I think Bowers um, could be around that 40, 50% again, just a little bit up forward. Um, Strom, obviously, the Ruckman. Um, Standard is the second highest as well, at 85 as well. There wasn't as many uh, CBAs. They don't seem to have as many goals kicked in their games, so they don't have as many CBAs. Um, Mulder, where is she? Um, if we look at the people that are on ball, it's East and Stannett. If we look here, East 77%, Stannett 85 that makes sense. So I think that Stannett role in the midfield is solidified, and we're just waiting for her to go big. Um, let me get... And then the third player that I am actually trading in is a massive, massive roll of the dice. And I kind of just want to do it. As I said in the intro, I'm going to go for it with, um, with the likes of... Um, with the likes of Ham, as I think it's just going to be fun, as well as the fact that I just want to kind of want to do it and just see what happens. Uh, so if we just set this trade up now, hopefully it will work now. Frederick, and then also here, Ham. Hopefully that'll let me do that. There we go. So those are those trades in. And if you look now, uh, if I just do that quickly, there we go. I have a pretty good um, back line of Thomas, Carney, Stanett, Heads, and Evans. A pretty decent midfield, at least the top three. It's just the bottom two that I'm a little bit lacking. Chris Barkas could easily be that type of player as well. So that's not the end of the world. And Ham is a throw at the dark. And hopefully she can make an 80 or 90 because if she makes another 80 or 90, we'll be looking at potentially a, a 130, 140, 150 um, growth in her. And that'll get up to 800K. And if you look at that, that forward line might just be the best that you can actually possibly do at the moment. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then it's just all about hoping that in some way, shape or form, um, Huntington and Brown can go up in price some way, shape to allow me to get a better, um, potentially a better midfielder in for Ham um, as we have a lot of... Uh, just missing pieces, I guess. And also, I was so surprised that um that uh, Western Bulldogs decided to drop um drop Borg. To be honest with you, like she did really well, didn't she? So for her to be dropped after one game is quite crazy, especially to put a forward in the ruck. Oh, I mean Edmonds is is it seems to be back. So I mean that sort of makes sense. I mean Edmonds should be off the um should be playing. So I mean Borg, that kind of sucks that um she's back anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll use, probably use actually Borg and Huntington, which will be, hopefully Huntington can have a good game and can get up to like 380, 390k, but I doubt that's going to happen. But if that did happen, that would give me like 130 plus, um, let me just, just, let me, let me just see if I can do it this way to give me my actual balance remaining. It's that I have 56k. So at the moment I would have 96 uh, 102, 13, 122, I believe, what, no, 132, one, uh, 132,000 plus whatever Ham does, if she gets 150k, um, and then Huntington gets like 50 or 60k, then I might be able to get a, 
another midfielder in and we look at those sort of prices around that 900k range and there isn't actually much to be honest in that range um but you probably target someone playing west coast or something like that which would be um we i don't know because they don't have the fixture list but um yeah you try and target someone like a um someone from maybe maybe north in itself or something like that um, as they play Western Bulldogs, who aren't the worst, te- aren't the best team. You could look at someone from the Giants, but they don't really have a midfielder um, that isn't Parker or something like that. I mean, Ever Evera is there, but she's not doing the greatest. Um, Be- Beeson, you could actually look at if she does well ne- this week because of Parker being out. If she goes 100 or something like that, then that could be an option as well. Um, but not this week for me, I don't think, as she hasn't really shown much, to be honest with you, um, outside of this game against St Kilda, and I'd like another week, but that would be an interesting play in the last week to upgrade Ham to Beetson, if that is possible, but we'll wait and see uh, with that one. If we look just um, at the GWS, I just want to see the GWS lineup for tonight and see where uh, their midfielders are. So you got... Dalloway in there. Um, you've got Dalloway, and then you've got Eva on the wing with Pease on the wing as well, which sucks. And then you've got Barr and Sharika, so they have three forwards in the midfield, so that really sucks. Um, just going to any any round 10 games to really see what I can do with um, Ham next week. Um, could try and go to someone from Geelong as they've got um, Hawthorne. And that is a good matchup, in my belief. And you've got Webster, who's starting to... Apparently, Nina Morrison isn't in the midfield rotation anymore. So that would be interesting to see what happens there. You've got Adelaide as well, playing um, Adelaide against the likes of West Coast. So you could see maybe Charlton isn't going to work there. I don't think Newman isn't going to work. Thompson, so they don't really have an option there. Um, Any other teams play each other that's doesn't really look like it to be honest you could look at a is there anyone from port around that range as well because they have the ease so you could look at maybe maloney if she goes and does well in the next round uh you could look at her in the last round against gws as gws seem to give good numbers to the um to midfielders itself but um yeah the team pretty much obviously is going to stay the same as we did trade out um as we went through those three trades really happy with that uh, back line as i said thomas carney stanett heads evans i wish i did get priest out the week earlier if i'd gone priest to stanett the week earlier would have saved me a lot of cash and montana ham would probably be if i just look here quickly if that hadn't been the case it probably would be um a Purcell or an Egan or something like that, I think, would be what Montana Ham would turn into, or maybe a Mackay or something like that, which could still happen in the last round if we get some good cash gen, but uh, would have been better to have, obviously, this round and be more comfortable with those sets of trades, but so be it. That's the that's the way Women's Fancy has sort of kicked me uh, to the curb this year in learning about how prices can change so, uh, so significantly. I mean, she lost... Priest lost 200k in the last week just because we didn't know her, her um, or we weren't certain about her role, to be honest. I didn't wasn't 100% certain that her role would vanish, and obviously it did. But, uh, yeah, just sort of sucks that that occurred. Um, but, yeah, just going to have some fun these last couple of weeks and hopefully uh, get inside the top, like, 250 or 300 or so. Um, yeah, I'm really just happy about the... Um, the ruck line, really happy about that. The forward line, really, really happy about that. And the back line, really happy. So it's just the midfield and it's just this Montana ham spot that I'm really worried about. But considering I have 15 good options, having one potential sort of what if um, shouldn't be the worst. And we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, that pretty much is the video. I mean, all the girls should, I mean, they should do well, to be honest. I mean, you've got the marinoff uh, garner Riddell matchup, which will be absolutely huge for anything. And just looking at the, uh, I guess, captaincy and vice-captaincy before we go, um, I've got pretty much free reign, as I've got a Geelong, a Sydney, and a Western Bulldogs. Geelong play in the um, in the 715 spot. So I've got the 515, 715, and 105 spot on the Sunday. So I have a pretty good range of players to go to. 
Um, who do I want to go for VC wise? Who do I want to go for? Um, let me just check with, and I'll probably actually have to swap this back, this screen back. There we go. So there we go. Um, if I was to pick a VC, um, I'm looking at sort of Gardner and Marinoff and just seeing, does Marinoff score well against the likes of North? Scores uh, 110, basically, if we look here. Um, I think that was North that I selected. Yeah, she's only really had one bad game against them, and that was season six. Other than that, she's gone 130. So I think that is going to be the VC as they play. When do they play? They play... Oh, no, that's going to be the captain, actually. Um, and then the speculative sort of VC is probably going to be... I wouldn't... That's the, that's the problem, is that they play so early. Um, don't really like any of those. So could we just go for a gold-worthy VC or something like that, just as a sort of stab in the dark, because I don't really have any other good VCs, because I don't have a, I don't have anyone from Port or Hawks or even the North Melbourne or Adelaide to go for. So I might actually do that, um, and Marinoff captain there. So that is the captain team VC of the week, and now we can actually sign off the video. So anyway, that is the video. Um, I'm hoping once. Once I get through this little period or something like that, once I can get through sort of uni schedule a little bit, that the videos will be, um, there'll be a lot more videos coming or ideas coming to the channel. Um, this is like the last round of the women, so, uh, or last little bit of the women's, we only have what, nine and then another five and then something like 20 odd more uh, videos for the women's uh, fantasy anyway. So um, that'll bring me close to mid-November anyway and then you'll probably see some draft content as well as some trade period review I know the trade period review will be a little bit old and then you'll see some other content come up on the channel when um when my I guess uni stops for the semester anyway that is the video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys